Let's analyze the Bible verses that discuss the final resurrections of mankind. I believe there are only four passages and none are found in the current day Tanakh or Old Testament. Interestingly, there are passages about the resurrections of mankind found in the book of Enoch, but we'll just stick to the 66 canon for this video. Let's begin with Yeshua. Yeshua said, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. So there are two resurrections. The resurrection of life for those that have done good, and the resurrection of damnation for those that have done evil. Yeshua also brings up the resurrection of man in Luke 14:14, 14, 14, which says, And thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Therefore, there are rewards at the resurrection of the just. The next passage is found in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews 11.35 reads, Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. So there is a better resurrection. And from the previous passages, we can conclude that the resurrection of life and the just is the better resurrection. The last few passages about these resurrections are found in the book of Revelation. Revelation 20 verse 6 reads, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall reign with him a thousand years. Therefore, the better resurrection, the resurrection of life, comes first. The people in the first resurrection are called holy, Selah. The participants in the first resurrection are rewarded with a guarantee to not take part in the second death, which is the lake of fire. Finally, in Revelation 20, verse 7, 11 through 12, and 15, reads, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. We learn from this passage that the second resurrection comes after the thousand years of Yeshua ruling and reigning the whole earth. All the participants of the second resurrection will be judged according to their works. Whoever is not written in the book of life will get thrown into the lake of fire. There is no implication, however, that all the participants get thrown into the lake. Contextually, there will be people who will have their names written in the book of life. Let's recap and summarize what we learned in a chart. So, the resurrection of life is better. There are rewards for those participating in this resurrection. There is a guarantee of no second death, which means all who participate in this resurrection have their name written in the book of life. And everyone in this resurrection gets to reign with Yeshua 
for 1,000 years. For the resurrection of damnation, this resurrection is not ideal. There are no rewards. There is no guarantee that you won't get thrown into the lake of fire. In other words, not all, participate, not all who participate in this resurrection will have their name written in the book of life. This will be decided upon or judged based upon one's works. Now that we have a grasp on the two resurrections, what about the harpazo, i.e. the rapture? There are only two verses that directly talk about the rapture. The first one is 1 Corinthians 15 verse 52, which reads, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. The second verse is 1 Thessalonians 5.28, which reads, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. From these verses, we learn that the harpazo, the rapture of Yah's people, happens soon after the dead in Christ rise from the grave, which is the first resurrection. And the dead in Christ receive their new incorruptible and immortal spiritual bodies first, before those that are alive and remain. Let's put the rapture into the chart. So the timing of the rapture is soon after the dead in Messiah rise and they get the same benefits as those that take part in the first resurrection. Now that we know the relationship between the two resurrections and the rapture, consider this passage. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Wait a minute. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands? This is the first resurrection? This passage clearly states that among the dead who will rise in the first resurrection include those people who will have been beheaded for refusing to worship the beast and his image and for refusing to take the mark of the beast. There should be no confusion. There are people in the first resurrection and the rapture who will have lived during the time where worshiping the beast and his image and taking the mark of the beast is an option. In other words, these people will be in the Great Tribulation. In order for people to refuse the mark and refuse worshiping the beast, they must be in the Tribulation period. Thus, the first resurrection and the rapture happens after the start of the Tribulation period and before the beast is thrown into the Lake of Fire. Yeshua wants his servants to be ready. Luke 12 40 reads, Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Revelation 19 7 reads, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, 
and his wife hath made herself ready. Are you ready? Ready for the great tribulation? <laughs>